Hi, in the last video I showed how to take an object, convert it to JSON and back. Now, using that technique, I'm going to show you now how you can pass objects via tethered applications using RAD Studio 86. So just to recap, um, using rest.json, there's a method in there, uh, sorry, a class called tjson, which has got methods for taking an object, converting it to a JSON string, and also taking um, a JSON string uh, and uh, converting it to an object. Now using that we're able to go ahead and start using some of the really cool features around tethering to be able to pass data back and forth. So I've got a small demo here that I just want to show you running first and then we'll get into the code behind it because um, it's, it's pretty quick to show and quite fun. So I have a scoreboard application here um, which has got a, a couple of players on it and I'm just going to launch up uh, a desktop and also a mobile application written using um, Rad Studio and the FM application framework. So here we've got uh, two clients and if we just uh, connect up here maybe we'll have John playing this game here and we'll have uh, Stephen playing this one here. So you can see as we connect in, um, there's methods that are being fired on the, the server here that go and build the, the score data. Uh, and as this data is updated, we can see that we're getting a, uh, a data packet built with individual objects being displayed by JSON representations. So with both connected now and with the data um, being pushed across to show the live scoreboards, um, let's go ahead and play the guess game. So uh, it's a random value between 1 and 100, so you have to bear with me two seconds whilst I uh, go ahead and try and work out what the, uh, the score, uh, what the value is. Okay, so Fred there guessed it in six attempts. Uh, sorry, John guessed it in six attempts. So we can now see we've got John on the scoreboard and the data packet has been rebuilt and sent back out. And if we go and have a look at the leaders, uh, I've not touched the other application, but the data has been pushed out um, to the client. So this is using a technique where we have a resource on the main application and we have a matching resource on the client side, which is mirrored. So the mirror is getting the data sent to it automatically when the, the public um, central data is updated. So let's go and have a look at how we actually do that and we'll see how this data is being pushed around. So we've got a player object which has got a name and a score. This is being pushed to the server which is being used to update this um, data here which is stored in a, a data set to allow us to index on the, the score values. And then the objects are being recreated from the data set to then build the data to come back to the clients. So let's go and have a look at that code. So let's have a look at the player. The player is simply um, a basic object that's got a name and a score, um, which are a string and integer values. Um, so nothing particularly complicated going on here. Uh, if we go and have a look at the um, the data module here, and we have a method that we send the score. So here we're checking that the tethering manager has got a remote profile. Um, if it has got one, then we know we're pretty much connected to something. Um, and then we're using the tethering app profile, uh, a method there to send a string, and we send that to the remote profile that we're connected to. Um, we just put a, a message in here to say that it's a T game player um, data set that we're sending. Uh, and this then we use the object to string uh, and we get the current um, object that we're using and um, that's selected in the prototype bind source. So we use the internal adapter to get the current one uh, and then we pass that through. So with the data being sent, um, it's got to be received somewhere. So if we go over to the main application here, to the scoreboard and the on receive resource. 
we're able to check that the resource that we're receiving, if the resource type is of data, um, there's two different types. There is uh, either a data or a stream. So a data will be a string representation. We're then able to say, okay, take the uh, take the value as a string and convert it into our object using the tjson uh, json to object notation here. Now with that object created from the json string, we're then able to go reference it as we would any other object. So we can now say player.name, go locate the current record if it exists, um, make it editable, if not go and insert it and update the name, and then uh, update the score to be the latest score. So we could have some logic here for determining if it's a better score or not, but um, here we're just updating the score and then posting it in. So once the um, once the uh, the data set has been posted to, and we have an after post event here that then goes and just persists the the data using the store to XML, um, uh, sorry the save to file on the data set, and then we update the score objects. So the update score objects literally just goes ahead and loops the data set. Um, we create a so we create a clone of the current data set, um, which allows, you know, if it's multiple threading stuff going on, it allows us to work with a consistent view of the data. So we're able to take a cloned cursor of the initial data set, and then we're just creating a string list here, and then creating instances of the game player um, with the name and the score, and converting it to uh, a JSON string, which we're then adding to our, our string list. Now once we have five records in there, we're just sending the top five out, uh, we're then able to just convert that into a delimited text format and push it straight out to the resource on the um, tethering app profile. So the tethering app profile resource here, um, because we have actions which you can call remote actions, so we have one here which causes the get scores, which allows us remotely to go and find out what the score is, and uh, which just calls the same process we just seen. Um, but we also have resources. Now the resource is called scoreboard, it's a shared resource, it's not a mirror of one, it's the shared one, and it's a data type. So that's where our JSON data packet is put to, which is then picked up by the remote clients. So on the remote client, we have under our resource, we have a, the matching resource for scoreboard, but here it's set as a mirror. So we're actually mirroring the data, pulling that data back. And then on the resource, we then have an event for on resource received. Uh, and in here, we're able to uh, clear out our current scoreboard. We're able to create a string list and take the data, put it into our, our string list. And then for every string in our string list, we're able to convert that data back to um, T game player objects, which we're able to add directly to our scoreboard um, um, uh, list. And our scoreboard list here um, is connected to by the prototype bind source for the scoreboard, which allows us to then uh, show the name and the score values and bind to that data directly um, through the application screen. So here's our scoreboard. If we just go bind visually, um, <coughs> we can see here's our list and here's our name and our score um, with the data being kept in sync. So without having to do anything else on the UI side, uh, as those data objects are pulled back and that list is updated uh, and the prototype bind source is told to go refresh itself, um, the UI will then update wherever those references are used. So in a nutshell, there we have it. That's passing objects via a tethered application very, very simply.